last time we entered into this Windows environment via a printer. And now we are in the system as a user called Tony. It's just a normal user, so it's nothing very special so far. We found the user flag. We still need to become an admin. Now, whenever Windows is involved, it's mostly a good idea to check out what does Metapreter or the Metasploit framework in general offer us as help, especially when it comes to a CTF. So we don't want to have just like this very basic shell. We actually want to get a Metapreter shell, which is like a reverse shell on steroids, which we can then load in Mimikatz. We can load in other exploits. We can do everything we like from the comfort of our Metapreter shell. We can have multiple sessions to it. We can run Metasploit exploits via the Metapreter session, etc., etc. So with that out of the way, how do we create this Metapreter session? Well. First of all, we need a tool called MSF Venom, which comes pre-installed on all Kali machines, I think. And we basically want this more or less, but uh, no, actually we want to use the payload Windows Metapreter. Is it Windows X64? Metapreter slash reverse TCP. So it connects back to us. So how, what is our IP? We get our IP by calling IPA. This is our L host. Our L port is as always 42069. We want an executable file and we will just call it ref other or call it met dot. And now it should create our metapreter cell thingy. Oh, actually let me move this met into the correct folder, which is the HTB driver. Perfect. So let's move into HTB driver. Then we have our session open here and we just upload our shell to, I don't know, let's go with C users, Tony, and let's call it backup.exe. So it's not, ah, come on. So it's not very suspicious. Users, Tony, doc. Ooh, men's. Oh, come on. What? Okay. What? What is happening? Let's, let's try that one more time. And backup.exe. Upload successful. All right. We need to set up a listener on our local machine. We do this with the multi handler exploit we need. So let's just use exploit multi handler. Set the payloads to Windows X. 64 metapreter then we have the reverse tcp the l host is our tunnel zero which is our ip but without having to enter the ip and our l port is the 42069 we defined before let's show the options and it looks okay let's run it now we have a very powerful tool at our disposal but um, to have a more sta stable session let's actually move our process to not be where it is right now but rather let's go to the explorer now which one is the pid the first one so we move our session to the explorer we do this by migrate and then the id i cannot mitigate into non-existing process where can we move into this one i mean there's no point in migrating if we we're just gonna get a less stable session no so the migration with it is so it's not running in the ram memory allocated to our backup program because maybe an antivirus or a sysadmin closes or quarantines our program so we moved our malware into the explorer dot which should always be running unless you're having major problems and want to restart the explorer for some reason so that's fantastic we're in now we can try the simple solution which is to just call get system and it didn't work okay so is there and we just run multi con local exploit suggester and now we're checking what kind of exploits could work on this machine there are over 2000 exploits that could be that they will test against 
this system that we run. Post interrupted by the console user. I didn't interrupt anything. Maybe, maybe let's just keep a watchful eye on what's happening as to not press anything to like break out of this post exploitation script. Okay. Um, we have a printer demon CVE. I mean, this, this sounds cool because it has 1337 into it, but this one is recode driver briefs. It's just a hunch, but the challenge is called driver, right? So all I'm saying is maybe that's a hint on which vulnerability we have to use. I mean, we can also go back to our evil win R session and run our history. And all the history we have is our shell. Read our shell history. Is it just get history? Could it be that easy? I want to see if we can, or maybe we have something in the documents. I mean, oh, we have just our backup thing. Let's go into the desktop. Maybe we can find some information that helps Okay, so not here. You may get history. Okay, let's do this. This sounds uh, great because we read the history safe path. Let's hope it works out. Okay, maybe we need to import this module first. Okay, let's take a look at where this path is usually located. App data folder. New so C users, your username, app data roaming, Microsoft PowerShell PS line. Let's just copy this. Oh great, we're already in the in the correct base. The users Tony. Now let's take a look at what's here. Console host history. Nice. Let's read this file. Maybe we can find some great information. And we have add printer. Printer name. There we go. We have a Rico and this one is also called Rico and it has drivers. So I'm guessing we're just going to use, let's put this in the background here. Sessions list. We have session one. Then let's use this Rico thing. Go so options set session one. Okay. Yeah. Whatever options set L host on zero and let's set the L port to something else, which could be for 20 for two or options. Let's run it. Oh, we have, we may have the wrong payload set payload windows X six four interpreter reverse TCP. No options that we have the tons in. Okay. Let's run it. I hope this will give us a privilege escalation. Sometimes hacking is just waiting for things, but it's weird that it's it's working better by using the same port as our existing metapreter session. How does that make sense? Show options and run it again. And this time I don't touch anything. Right. I mean, oh boy, before we continue, I have now two sessions and I am Tony on both of them. Let's set session two and run it like that. Okay. Now this looks like it's working better. Adding printer. Why do we have to like have two metapreter session attached the second one? Why do we need the second metapreter session if we already have a metapreter session on the same port? And the second question is why don't you just add use the second metapreter session if you want to use that automatically or okay, the history doesn't go that up. Sometimes hacking is a mix of waiting and being confused. How long does it take for the stage to arrive? What's happening? Can I get like at least some updates back? Like did it fail or not? I think to be honest, Metasploit on an ARM architecture doesn't quite work out for me that well. I had similar issues on the ECPPT v2 exam with my Metapreter and Metasploit sessions. So I had to switch over to an old computer of mine with an Intel architecture. But I mean, that's a couple of kilobytes, right? 20 KB, something like that should be done in an instant. I'm getting impatient <laughs> if you can't tell. And yeah, exploit completed, but no session. It did create a session as anti-authority system. Interpreter attached to a session and then through session. I am sessions. Come on. Who am I? Get UID. 
sorry. I'm anti-authority system. So the exploit did work. It just had some trouble connecting to the shell. But that's ARM-based Metasploit for you. Best is to use Metasploit on an Intel-based computer. I always had issues, even with the SOX proxy, etc. The ARM-based Metasploit doesn't work that nicely. But well, hey, cut that. We're admin. And now I get Metapreta session free opened. Okay, well, let's just drop into a shell. Let's check out. Let's go into administrator. Let's go to the desktop. And in here we have root.txt. So let's type root.txt and we get the root shell. Fantastic. If you learned something from this challenge today, it's that you should never use the ARM-based Kali system. Thank you very much for joining in today's hacking challenge. Um, make sure to join in next week when we're going to do our next challenge, one which you will be able to vote during the week. So see you over there on the community tab and don't forget to vote.